Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and Valentine's Day is fast approaching, so I thought it would be topical of me to make my version of Cupid. This of course means starting with a little ball of aluminium wrapped in pale fleshy clay. Once I've got a little aluminium filled nut sack, I can get a general shape shaped out then smoosh a second smaller ball on top, which will be Cupid's oversized baby face face. I'll then fill out that face by adding lumps of clay to the jaws and cheeks, then I can poke some divots for future eyeballs before adding a little sausage in the middle to make his nose. After blending and smoothing, I can add some more little dots along the bottom of the nose to get a more prominent nose shape. Then it's back to bulking out those cheeks since my Cupid is pretty much a middle-aged man that looks kind of like a baby. But like, not in a weird way, in, a, in an endearing way. Now I'm going to use some leftover eyeballs from my Ring Angel video since they're the perfect size and they come pre-painted. <laughs> Once I've finished admiring the excellence of a lidless Cupid face, I can start adding those aforementioned lids by squishing little worms of clay above and below the eye and then smoothing them out before adding a couple more to bulk up the eyebrow. A pointy clay shaper jammed up the nose will add some sniffing holes and I can make his mouth by jamming a sculpting tool into his face and wiggling it up and down. Cupid's going to be coming to the horrible realization that shooting a dude in the heart with an arrow may have unintended consequences, so I want him to have a shocked, horrified look on his face. Finally, his neck's not nearly thick enough, so I'll add some more sausages connected to the front and the back to really bulk out his body and give him that quintessential little fat floating angel aesthetic. Then after some final wrinkling, I can set them aside and get started making some little pudgy arms. I'll start with a little lump of clay that I can then roll into a taper tube and pinch the tip to give me a chunky mitten into which I can cut a series of fingers. Then a little pinching, pulling, yanking and rolling will make my lumpy squares into rounded sausages and I can mark out the wrist then add a thumb and lots of extra padding to the palm. A little bend in the elbow will align his hand with his mouth and I can stick the arm onto the body and blend it in to hide any unsightly seams. I'll then thicken up his chest a little bit by smooshing a couple little moves in place and blending them down so as to not make him appear too muscular. A little extra padding around the midsection will help to add that last little bit of paunch and I can poke a belly button into the center before adding the ever important nips to finish his torso off. I can then make his right arm in pretty much the exact same way I made his left arm but you know his thumb goes on the other side and I can press it into place on the body and blend it in. Of course the reason the arm is extended is because he's going to be holding his bow which means I need to make his bow. This of course starts out like most things as a little lump of clay that gets rolled into a little noodle then pinched into the appropriate shape. Once I've curled the tips for that added fanciness, I'll use some cookie cutters to make sure my arms are appropriately rounded and it's into the oven to bake before being pried loose and attached to the still unbaked right arm, which I can now wrap around the bow to finish off Cupid's upper half. Before I bake the body though, I'll give the whole thing a healthy wash in isopropyl alcohol to smooth out the tool marks and fingerprints. While the body's baking, I'll begin the enlegging process which is quite unique in that it starts with a lump of clay that gets rolled into a sausage and pinched until it looks kinda like a leg, at which point I'll poke some toes into the tips of the foot and add some padding to the bottom. With that, by now the body has cooled so I can press another lump of clay onto the underside and poke some leg receptacles into the bottom so I can attach my big chunky man baby's lower limbs. Some more smoothing to hide the seams and I can take a bit of time to make sure Cupid is absolutely double cheeked up before moving on to adding lots of leg wrinkles and giving the lower half a final smoothing with some more alcohol. Then it's into the oven to bake again before moving on to painting Cupid's skin tones. I want to paint before I add his clothes so I can make sure I hit all the sneaky hard to reach spots without worrying about over brushing. Once I've laid down a deeper pink base coat I can use a sponge to add lighter layers over top before realizing that it's taking way too long at which point I'll crack out the airbrush. As long as I'm careful I can blend the lighter pink tones on top and create a lovely fleshy gradient towards the darker recesses which will still retain the dark pink base coat. Before I add the rest of the details, I'll pry the bow out of his hands, which I probably should have done earlier, but you know, planning ahead and all that, and I can begin building up his beautiful golden locks. 
I'll slap some yellow clay onto the top of his dome, then begin shaping it into a curly-haired head of hair. I've never actually sculpted curly hair before, but I found little flicks with the sharper end of a shaping tool seem to produce some pretty halfway decent results. And if this channel had an overarching theme, it would be halfway decent results. With the hair done, I can wrap some white wormy dealies over his shoulder and around his groinal zone, then begin poking and prodding it with the flat of a couple different sculpting tools to make the folds of his fancy white toga. Once the toga has been baked, I flipped him over and drilled a couple holes into his back where his wings will fit. To make the wings, I'll draw a template on a sheet of cardboard, then fold that sheet in half so I can cut out two equally sized mirrored wings. A quick size check to make sure the size checks out and I can begin the in-winging process. I'll start by rolling out an extra thin sheet of white clay that I can cut the shape of my wings out of using my little cardboard templates. I then bend some wire to fit the wings and I'm on to making the feathers. To do this, I'll cut some angled lines into the wings moving towards the center, then I'll add a noodle halfway up and smooth everything above it out so I can trace some more feathers before repeating this process to create the final line of feathers. I'll then use a sharp shaping tool to mark out the rachis that runs down the center before going back through and adding the barbs one side at a time. Once that's done, I'll bake the wing once to lock the feathers in place before flipping it over and repeating the process on the other side. After a second bake, I'm left with some excellent double-sided feathery wings. All that's left to do then is add the furry bit on top, which I'll do by wrapping the wire in some clay and carving some little furry lines along the length. Now, given that Cupid is carrying his bow with him, he's gonna need a place to store his arrows, so I'll wrap this little wooden stir stick in a blob of brown clay that I can then smooth and carve into a squarish looking quiver. Clay won't generally bond to wood, so by making the quiver around the stir stick, I can bake it together to make sure it keeps its shape, then remove the wood after, leaving me with an empty quiver ready for arrows. To make said arrows, I'm gonna use some toothpicks. I'll snip the fancy tip off the end, then wrap the end in a strip of painter's tape, which I can then cut into a little heart-shaped fletching. I can then paint the shaft pink and the fletching red. Once the quiver's been baked, I can give it a dark brown wash to make it a little more leathery, then add some leathery weathering with some lighter brown dry brushing and sponging. I'll then paint Cupid's togo I'll then paint Cupid's toga white to help hide any of the pink paint below that might have seeped through where the fabric was thin before dry brushing a lighter yellow through his hair to add some highlights. I'll then dry brush the wings with a white to pick out the sharper textures as well as add a dash of white in the center of each feather for a tiny bit of variation. And with the wings finished, it's finally time to assemble all my pieces. However, before I glue all my bits together, I want to add a bit of UV resin to Cupid's eyes to give them a bit more life. In order to hang his quiver, Cupid's gonna need a belt, so I'll fashion a cheap and cheerful belt by wrapping his waist in a little twine and tying it off. I can then glue the quiver to his back, fit the wings into their pre-drilled wing holes, then give him his bow and fill his quiver. With that, Cupid is finished, however, I need to make him fly. To do that, I've drilled a little hole in his undercarriage that I can jam this little length of acrylic rod all up inside. He's a little wobbly, but given that he's just done a murder, it would make sense that he's a little woozy anyways. Speaking of which, let's make a victim. Now, my plan, in as much as I ever have one, is to make Cupid's victim lying face down in a field with an arrow jutting out of his back. The beauty of this design is that I don't have to really make the front of the victim since he's going to be lying face down anyways. This should save me a ton of time since the front of a person tends to be where you find the majority of the detail. Once I've got my aluminium body built, I can start to wrap the various bits in appropriately colored clay. I'll start with the fleshy bits beneath so I can build the clothes on top. I'll wrap the bottom of the torso in a little clay where his shirt has come up as he was shot mid-walk before wrapping the arms in their own fleshy clay and attaching a little hand to the end. I can then attach the arm to the body with the palm facing up and reposition the fingers in a more oh no I'm dead pose. Then I can attach the right arm to the other side outstretched above his head. And that head of course has no face. Once it's all been baked, I can then begin building up his shirt by wrapping the torso in a layer of white clay. Entirely unintentionally, I made this character in the exact same outfit I happen to be wearing, and he ends up looking pretty much like I do, right down to the same color of hair. Also, as far as you guys are concerned, I also don't have a face. So, I guess you can kinda count this video as the somewhat late 
1 million subscriber face reveal. Once I've added the wrinkles, I'll cover the back in some cling film and press a divot into the back about where his heart would be before jamming a toothpick into the center. I'll then remove the toothpick and cling film and add some wrinkles where the shirt will have been pulled in by the arrow. Then I'll put the arrow back in and it's into the oven while I get to work on his jeans. I'll wrap an extra sausagey sausage of clay around the aluminium legs until all the shiny bits are covered. Once I've got the appropriate amount of bulk, I can press the jeans onto my freshly baked body and smooth the transition around the waist. I made a pair of kicks off camera that I can jam into the bottom of the jeans, then a strip of blue clay wrapped around the bottom will finish his feet off so I can move on to the texturing. I've got a spare piece of curtain that I find works perfectly for jeans at this scale. A quick pokey pokey with a curtain on top will impart the texture and I can start to add the cornucopia of wrinkles. A couple little rectangles will be his belt loops and a couple pocket shaped sheets of clay will be the pockets. Finally some final texturing will finish his pants off and some brown clay smooshed onto his head will be his hair. I'll make it a little bit longer to cover his missing jawline but apart from a little texturing of the hair, he's basically finished and ready for some paint. I'll paint the fleshy bits with some similarly colored fleshy colors to give it a more unifying base coat before giving his shirt a very thin gray wash to add just a tiny bit of shading. Then his pants will get a dark blue wash to add some shading to the wrinkles before hitting it with a couple coats of progressively lighter dry brushing to bring out the sharper details. His hair will also get a lighter brown dry brush for the same effect and I can paint the soles of his shoes black and well that's my victim finished which means all I need to do is make a field for him to lie down in. I'll start with an appropriately sized sheet of foam, then I can then base coat with a black paint and Mod Podge mix. Once that's cured completely, I can then cover my base in a layer of hole filler to make my base a little muddier. And once that's had adequate time to cure, I can paint that sandy color a muddier, darker brown. Next, I'll slather the base in a thick layer of basing glue so I can add my static grass on top. Now, I know a grassy field is a tiny bit boring for a base, but I kind of sculpted myself into a corner by making so little detail on the victim that I need to make a field of tall grass to hide the non-existent detailing. On the other hand though, static grass is the tits. Now that I have my grassy field, all that's left to do is assemble the parts. My faceless body double goes face down in the field and Cupid can be suspended via his acrylic undercarriage rod, staring down in horror at his victim. The last little piece of the puzzle then is pulling a single arrow from his quiver to deliver the killing blow. And with that, we're all done here and onto the glamour shots. Dispatch, we got what looks like a 140 here. Yeah, an arrow, right through the heart. Never seen anything like it. As always, a massive thank you to the fine folk over on Patreon who continue to support this channel and a very special hey how are you to my newest patrons. Harry High Pants, Bad Outta Hell, Lori Gildersleeve, Carla, Pizza Veet, Willa Art, Carlos Torres, Darth Zabby, Connor Casey, Caitlin, Thanks for Dinner, Love Steven, Stonerlicious, Louie, Brianna Ward, The Gunplug Guy, Brandon Walker, Tim Jack Danielson, D20 Crit, V, Ethan Myers, Nick and Bree, Alan Goodman, Fanti and Mingo, Matthias Applefist, and I Poop Standing Up. You are the chubby little angelic psychopaths that fill this channel's heart with unintentionally lethal heart-shaped arrows. I fully acknowledge that this isn't my greatest sculpture, but I laughed the entire time I made this, so I hope you had a little chuckle as well. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.